This is an overview of ITG Center Program Management. I'm Jack Campbell. In this video, we will take a look at some recommended portlets for program management and how to configure them. As we saw in the previous video, the View Program page provides some basic information about a program. However, you are not limited to what is provided in the View Program page. There are a number of portlets in ITG Center that are available to program managers, and depending on your needs, there is likely a portlet that can provide that information. In addition, having that information easily accessible on a dashboard makes it very convenient to monitor your programs. I've already logged into ITG Center. To start, I will create a new dashboard for the Minnesota GIS program. We recommend that you create a separate dashboard for your program since there are five main portlets and it is important not to add any more than five portlets to a single dashboard. To create the dashboard, select Personalized Dashboard from the Dashboard menu. Right-click on Private Pages, hover over the Add button and select New Page. Enter a title for the new page. To add the portlets, click the Add Portlet button. From the Category menu, select Program Management, click Find Portlets. Check the box next to Issue List, Program Project List, Program Risk List, and Program Scope Change List and click Add. There's one additional portlet to add. Click the Add Portlet button again. From the Category menu, select Project Management. Click Find Portlets. Check the box next to Project Gantt and click Add. You can arrange the portlets on the dashboard however it is most useful for you. You can move the portlets around by dragging them and you can also expand or contract them by clicking on the Set Portlet Width button. I found it is useful to see the project list first, then the project Gantt, and then the issues, risks, and scope changes. Now we need to edit the portlet preferences. Let's start with the Program Project List portlet. Click the Edit Portlet Preferences button located in the top right corner of the Program Project List portlet. We want this portlet to display a list of projects in the program. To accomplish that, we just need to enter the program name. There are some other options that you might want to configure, such as the number of rows displayed. If you have more than five projects in your program, you will want to increase the rows to match the number of projects so that you can see them all at one time in your dashboard. You can also adjust the columns that are displayed in the portlet if desired. Finally, be sure to save your changes to the portlet preferences by clicking the Save button. To configure the next portlet, you can select it in the left navigation bar. For now, I'm going to skip over the Project Gantt portlet and quickly configure the Issues, Risks, and Scope Change portlets. First, the Issues List portlet. The only thing we need to do here is select the program name and click Save. Finally, let's take a look at the preferences for the Project Gantt portlet. There are a variety of options with this portlet. I'm going to recommend what I have found works well, but feel free to play around with this. First, you want to select the program, just as you have done with the other portlets. Next is Task Status. You can change this if you want, but I'm going to leave it as it is. The default is to show all tasks in the Gantt no matter what their status is. Then there is a place to check what items you want to include in the Gantt. I have found including that the summary tasks and the milestones work the best. If you include all tasks, the Gantt gets a little busy. Then you want to set the hierarchy depth to include enough layers so that you can see everything under the summary tasks, including the milestones. The default is set to 2. For this project, I'm going to set the hierarchy depth to 4, but if you need more depth, you can set it even higher. 
You can show critical path, but most projects are probably not built with critical path in them, so leave that set to no. For the time range, the default is set to show the past two weeks and the next two weeks, but you probably want to see the entire time range. Then there are some display options for you to choose. This is really up to you to decide what you'd like to see in the Gantt. Again, the Gantt can get kind of busy, so I limited my selection to Indicate Progress, Show Legend, Indicate Health, and Show Name Column. And I left the defaults for the text to display as Tasks Labels. Finally, I left sort by set to the default, which is project hierarchy, and I set the number of results I wanted to see displayed in the portlet view and in the maximized portlet view. The number you will set here will depend on how deep your Gantt chart is and what you need to see at one time. You may have to play with these numbers here to get it right for your needs. Now I will save and go to the final dashboard. I will click the Go to Page View button on the toolbar. So now what we see in the final dashboard is a list of projects in the program. There is the project Gantt chart that is displaying the summary tasks and milestones for each of the projects, and we see a list of issues, risks, and scope changes. This dashboard provides a good overview of the program, and it may be something you would like to share with your sponsors or stakeholders. To print the dashboard, you will first need to export it to PDF. The export option is located in the upper right-hand corner of the dashboard. When you click to create a PDF, you will get the PDF settings. For the most part, you can leave the default settings as they are, however, you may want to choose which portlets to include in the PDF. Just click the plus sign next to Choose Portlets and deselect any portlets you do not want to include. For now, I'm going to deselect the Issues, Risks, and Scope Changes, and then click Export. Once the PDF has been generated, I can either print it or I can save it. This concludes the third video in the ITG Center Program Management Overview. In the next video, we will take a look at how to set up the performance metrics for a program portlet.